everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I am going to teach you guys how to use Soundflower to record the internal audio on your computer. Record your computer screen and record the visual and the audio of your computer, including the internal sound, but if you have an audio interface. So basically, a few people have asked me what camera I use because the sound sounds really good. Basically, when I record my videos making beats, I use a program called Soundflower. In order to use Soundflower when you're using an external audio interface, you need to rig it up in a certain way that gets a little bit complicated. So yeah, basically I record the internal audio and also the screen at the same time. I sync it up with my camera audio so when I edit videos making beats, we don't lose the bass, we level it so that the sound quality sounds better, basically. We know I've got a microphone on this Canon, shouts out Jay Cadet, he donated me his microphone Christmas? Last year, Christmas last year. Um, so I use the microphone on there which is actually very sensitive and it's quite loud. However, sometimes that loudness can distort or sometimes you can like get all the air in the background and stuff like that. So what I do is I line it up with the internal and we put it together. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do that. It can get very tricky and there's a couple of things that I'm gonna along the way tell you to just keep Keep in mind when you if, if you do try and do it if there is an easier way that anyone knows how to do it just please let me know because oh my god it does in my nut trying to sort it out sometimes let's get into it beat okay so not only do I use soundflower but I use QuickTime player to actually record the screen so I'm gonna get into that right this second and I'll show you how I line it up with logic as well okay so you can see here we have all right let's just shut it and pretend we're starting again the first thing you want to do is you want to go onto google oh my god this is not open why did i not do this before why didn't i line this up the first thing you want to do is go onto google you want to type in soundflower you want to download soundflower if you're on a mac that will be a dmg file you download soundflower you install soundflower now as far as i'm aware there's not an application for soundflower on here on my computer like say here if i type in soundflower on my computer this is this is what I can't deal with. Things like this I can't. Right. So I have actually snapshot above that. Right. You can see here I've got the DMG files here, but there's no actual application in on, on my computer. There's no application. It's how it's what you do after you install Soundflower. So you want to go onto Google. You want to type in Soundflower. This is the this is one of the cons actually of doing all of this. It slows down the computer. I don't know if it's because I have the old software. I don't know if I need a new computer. I don't know if I need new RAM. I have recently wiped the majority of the stuff of my computer. Let's get into it. I am going to link below the link that you need for Soundflower in order to download Soundflower and get stuff cracking. So you download Soundflower, you install it. Okay, install, restart your computer. You then, because we have an external um, audio interface, this is what you now need to do. Don't watch this video if you don't have an audio interface and you're thinking, why is she doing all, why is she doing the most in applications? Just bear in mind, this is if you have an external interface and you're trying to record your computer and you're trying to record logic. Okay, let's just, just forget about my desktop right now. First things first, audio MIDI setup, open that. Also, open up system preferences at the same time, okay? Right. Now, let's pretend that we can't see any of this stuff here. You, my um, audio interface, I've got a Sapphire, yeah? So I've got a Sapphire Pro 24. Now, after you install Soundflower, you'll see Soundflower 2, 2CH, Soundflower 64CH. That's to do with the amount of channels that you're using. You're only gonna need Soundflower 2CH. Let's just pretend that 64 is not there, okay? I don't know the ins and outs of Soundflower. Let's just pretend I do. Just listen to what I'm saying. It will work and just bear with it and be patient because it is a pain in the ass, okay? So, Soundflower, you can see that Soundflower is there, Soundflower 64 is there as well. Now, what you need to do, okay, is click this, we're in audio devices here, so audio MIDI setup, okay? It should be on the main um, taskbar on your computer. You need to go down to this plus sign, click the plus sign. It will come up with create aggregate device and create multi output device. The first thing you want to do is create aggregate device. You will come up with this here, okay? 
So I'm clicking on aggregate device here. This is what we are going to use for nothing. So, so just I'm just telling you this works, okay? It took me hours, but I managed to get it to work this way. So this is how I did it. Aggregate device. You want to put your external audio interface there, Soundflower 2 channel there, yeah? Just make sure those two things are ticked, nothing else. The next thing you want to do is click the plus button, create multi-output device. You click on multi-output device once it's created. You don't need to change the name of it or anything to replicate your audio interface. Just leave it how it is. You want to make sure that your audio interface is selected. You want to make sure that Soundflower 2 channel is selected as well. Now, if you are using the built-in output on your computer, just select built-in output and it will work in the same way. So essentially what you're doing here is you're making an output um, through Soundflower and your audio interface at the same time. So you want to right click on that and you want to click use this device for sound output, yeah? So when you come over on this side of the screen, it will automatically select it here as your output. You want to make sure that Soundflower is created as your input, yeah? So right click on Soundflower, use this device for sound input. It won't let me select it because it already is, but use that for the input. And you'll come over here and it will be on your input. And you can see as well where that microphone is here. That's because it's my input. The output here, it's got the little um, speaker sign there. That's because that's my output. Now, I'm just letting, like, word of advice for anyone that's trying to do this. This is a very tricky process that every time I do it, it, it takes me hours. The reason why I had to redo this recently is because I decided to unplug my whole studio and repaint this area. Just give it a refresh, yeah? I've unplugged my computer, I've gone back to it and it's changed all my settings. Once you get this set up, you shouldn't really need to touch it for any, for any reason. You might need to make another aggregate device, for instance, if I'm using these decks, um, because this is set up as an output, I have to do all the rejigging and stuff to be able to use my interface as an output. But unless you're using other things like that, you shouldn't need to, once you've done it, just leave it how it is, it will work. Your iTunes, it will still come out of your speakers, it's not gonna mess any of that stuff up. Once it's set like this, just leave it. When you set it up, you may need to shut um, all, um, audio MIDI devices and you may need to shut your system preferences a couple of times, reopen it. Same with iTunes when I was trying to get it to work. You may need to shut it and open it again just to make sure. Another thing as well that shouldn't put you off is when you're testing out um, QuickTime Player to see if it's actually recording the sound, it may record the sound very quietly. So when you're playing it out of the speakers, you might not hit. When you're playing it back, you might think, oh, it hasn't recorded the sound. The reason why it may not have recorded recorded the sound is simply because it's quiet in comparison to your iTunes and whatever else. Now let's go straight on to the next bit. So now that's there. Um, obviously I'm recording the screen at the moment to show you what I'm doing so I can't play you back what I mean if that makes sense because this is something I've set up previously. I mean this is what I'm recording right, I'm recording the screen right now so I can't um, give, I can't record Logic and show you what I mean. Let's open up Logic, I'm going to show you my settings that I have in Logic in order to record the audio in Logic while I'm using the screen. So what you want to do is hit on preferences, click on audio. Now, I've got my output device set as multi-output device, so that's the same as the, uh, the main in system preferences. Multi-output device, so it's still gonna come out your interface, but it's coming through Soundflower at the same time, yeah? Input device, Soundflower. Now, previously, this hasn't had an effect on me recording sound through my audio interface. You can plug in your microphone as normal, you, rec re you can record as normal, and it will also record that through when you're doing your QuickTime player screen recording. So you can see the settings here, take note of these settings. I've screenshotted them myself because I do not want to forget because it takes me hours every single time, and every single time I think I'm doing it wrong. And sometimes when you're changing your settings, you click apply changes, or when you're in system preferences and you switch over and you're in iTunes, you're like, why is the sound not coming out? Just wait a couple of minutes and it will do it. So just have faith in what I'm telling you. Well, it works for me anyway. I hope it works for anyone else that's actually following this video as a tutorial. I mean, 
who am I to, to give anyone advice? Right, so those are my logic settings. Once you've done that, it's time for you, we can shut these things. It's now time for you to start recording your screen. You want to record your screen, you want to do tutorials. You, you want to record your screen because you've got a presentation at work tomorrow. What you need to do, your computer should have it already on a Mac anyway. If you want to type in QuickTime Player, it should be one of your applications. You might need to update it, who knows. Go into applications, okay? Right click at the bottom here. It Obviously it's gonna say stop screen recording. You want to click new screen recording, okay? When that comes up with new screen recording, Oh, fuck, I can't even show you, can I? It will come up with new screen recording, okay? It will come up with screen recording. What you then want to do is you want to click on the arrow, the down arrow sign, and you want to make sure that the microphone is selected to Soundflower, the 2CH, yeah, in brackets, 2CH, two channel. You want to click that option. Once you get that, you should get a little signal coming through on the volume control, on, on the volume level you should get um you should get a little signal coming through on the volume level that shows you that everything's on track if not what you might want to do is what i've done a few times is just click new screen recording and, and record your screen with the sound click stop listen back and make sure you've got no music playing at the same time and hear if it's actually recorded the sound and see if it's recorded the screen at the same time and you should be good to go just to double check do you know what i mean you don't want to record your whole screen for an hour and you go back to it and you realize there's no sound so just make sure um so yeah make sure that's clicked and that's it you're, you're good to go like you're literally good to go um yeah, so I use I use QuickTime Player to record my screen. Let's click screen recording. You can drag your screen wherever you want it. You can drag it for the smallest part of your screen. Start recording, and then when whenever you're ready, click stop stop screen recording. Now I've showed you the settings to use when you're using Logic. Wow, my cam my ca my camera really tried to die on me. Let's try just try and get myself in focus. Okay, so yeah, it takes me hours to get to this point every single time, but we got there and that's why I'm sharing my knowledge. One, I want to share my knowledge with you guys, but two, I haven't shared anything with you guys in a long time and it seemed like the right thing to do because I've wanted to do it for a while, so. Yeah, I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, you're here already. You might as well like, share, comment, do all that jazz. Also, if you know another piece of software that can that I can do this with, that's easier to do, easy to set up, quick to set up. If I was going to record somebody else's Mac screen and it was quick to do, please can somebody let me know because I'm telling you, in the past this has been a night where it's pretty quick to set up if you're using the output for your Mac. If you're not and you're using an interface, an external interface, it can be a bit tricky. So this is why I've made this video because I couldn't seem to find the information that I wanted in order for me to do it. So give this video a thumbs up or dislike. Dislike as I see you. Cause you know, bitch is going viral now. So I got haters and shit. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, honestly. When you're doing it, just make sure you restart your computer regularly, take a break, don't get wound up like I do because I have a very short temper, even though people might not realize because I have high tolerance with people as well, but I do get very angry, so um, take a break. Listen back to your screen recording when your computer is not playing music so you can hear because the, the input might be coming through at a low volume, so, listen back when nothing else is playing so you can hear if it's actually getting the screen recording if it's not working for you play around with the settings until you get to where you need to get to we got there in the end shom we got there shom loves herself really she does she gets frustrated with herself but she loves herself really like seriously